the side of bike advocacy that maybe doesn't get talked about near enough. Welcome back, friends. Happy Monday. You know, when I first started working in bike shops, advocacy was sort of a fledgling idea, at least in Indianapolis. There was only one guy that I knew of that was really uh, beating the drum for bike advocacy. And I didn't really have much use for it. I mean, I was in my 20s. I was going to live forever. This was the late 80s, mind you. There were, what, 30% fewer cars on the road. None of them had touch screens. Uh, and nobody had a mobile phone. So it didn't seem at the time like it was all that important. I've talked about this before. You know, fast forward, obviously it's very important. But back in those days, there were two camps, at least my understanding was that there were two camps. There were the we need separate trails and lanes camp, and there were the no, we belong on the road camp. And the trails and lanes group, uh, I think, came out on top of that little uh, debate. But I'm wondering if the we belong on the road camp shouldn't have been given uh, a bigger seat at the table. What do I mean by that? Well, first I want to say that, you know, trails and, and bike lanes are extremely important, and we need them. But it takes forever to get these projects completed, as anybody that's ever worked in, uh, you know, a, an advocacy organization can attest. There's a, a trail project that's been going on uh, in Hendricks and Marion County for 40 years. And, you know, they'll throw a big party when they get one mile that doesn't connect to anything paved. And, uh, you know, I guess as well they should. But in order for trails to really be useful, if we're going to say that bicycles are uh, a legitimate form of transportation, which as you know, I think they are and should be, then those trails need to go somewhere and they need to connect to something. Ideally, other trails. But at some point, you know, you're going to have to ride on a street. At least that's my experience. I'm sure there are some uh, utopian landscapes uh, where you can go everywhere on trails. I've heard Minneapolis is like that. I'm sure Portland is like that. Um, but those... But those things are, those places are few and far between. So the trails need to go somewhere and they need to connect to something. If the We Belong on the Road camp had been given a little more room to, to speak, in my mind, that would have required cities, states, and municipalities, plus the DOT, to recognize the bicycles belonged on the road, which also, in my mind, would have necessitated, you know, perhaps some, uh, let's say, enforcement of the laws, not only with regard to drivers, but, you know, with regards to cyclists as well. And, you know, dare I say, there may have needed to be, well, there does need to be, there may have actually been some repercussions for killing a cyclist or a pedestrian with your automobile. These are just things that I've been thinking about. So as it stands now, most, at least the advocacy organizations that I'm aware of and that I have been involved in, um, I'm sure I, I am not an expert on the uh, topic of advocacy and your organization uh, may have different thoughts about this. It's perfectly possible. But what I've seen is there's always a big, there's some kind of trail project that takes up the bulk 
of the time. And then over in the corner, there's the education aspect, mostly geared towards drivers, safe driving. Incredibly important. But my question is, how is that information being disseminated? Who is it being, you know, pointed at? In my experience, again, I see these educational posts on social media, but they're preaching to the choir. Those messages are going to the people that already follow their content, which leads me to believe that they're already of like mind. How is that message being distributed to the people that really need to hear it, which are the people behind the wheels of automobiles? That's a question that I don't have an answer to, but I would like, uh, I'd like to have one, and maybe you know. Bicycle advocacy is a, an important, but also it can be, I think, a very thankless task. Any, most of these organizations are headed by one person. That one person is completely dependent on the work of volunteers to get that work done. And it's really a shame. Um, again, I'm sure there are some places where uh, that's not the case. But those are just some thoughts that have been rattling around in my head. What do you think? Do you, have you worked with advocacy organizations? You know, what's your experience been like? And do you think that if that We Belong on the Road group had been given a, a little more uh, time, would that have changed anything? That's the question I think I'm really grappling with at this point. If you've made it this far, <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, I hope something good happens to you today.